Hello and welcome back to the virtual show, the show that we're going to be delivering from the 22nd to the 29th of May. Uh, through this period, we're going to be giving on average uh, three talks a day uh, on uh, throughout these seven days. Uh, if you're wanting to see any of the videos that we've already done, you can go to our website, which is cambrianphoto.co.uk uh, and click on the Photo and Optics show and see all the speakers that have previously been and also all the speakers that are coming up as well. So um, there is a link in the description as well, so you can follow that link through just on there the same way. Uh, we're also very pleased to announce that uh, all the talks that we're doing for the virtual show uh, are absolutely uh, free. So uh, because of this, we are asking for donations. All donations will be going to chosen charities and local food banks. Uh, you can find the donate button once again on our photo and optics page. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, if you are watching live, as always, if you can comment, let us know that you, you are watching live. It's always nice to see you. Um, we've got a lovely day today. Um, we're gonna hear from Mark in a second from Sony. Really looking forward to hearing from Mark. Uh, later on today, we have uh, Paul from Celestron. He'll be going into uh, how to use a scope with a smartphone, which is going to be very interesting. And then later on this evening, uh, we're going to be looking into how to use uh, uh, speed lights with uh, with our cameras uh, off camera, as it were. So uh, yes, without uh, seeing the, the good mornings coming through, good morning, everyone, it's always nice to see. Um, let's give a big warm welcome uh, for this morning's uh, speaker, uh, Mark from Sony. Hi, Mark. How's good it going? You okay. Hey, good morning. Yeah, great. Jolly good. Jolly good. I'm. Uh, you've got a very impressive setup there. It's almost like you've, uh, you've you've taken Sony. You've taken Sony HQ. You've picked it up, <laughs> and you've moved it. <laughs> yeah, I, I. It's been. I, I, you know, as you know, from everybody, it's been quite challenging. Whatever, whatever we're doing, and. Uh, just before lockdown, I just thought, well, hang on a minute. Um, as the event manager for Sony and the Photo Channel, I've got all the equipment and the and the display stand here. Um, it's a modular stand that goes into nine nine meters. This is three meters by two and a half high. And I just thought, right, let's set it up. So it went in me. Uh, it went in my shed uh, for a few weeks, and then as the weather's got better, my wife was like, "Can we have our shed back?" And uh, so I then had to transfer it all into the house, and now it's in the <laughs> In a, in a small room i'm literally like you know half a meter away from the camera so it's a it's a bit a bit tight a bit, <laughs> a bit squashed yeah it, it looks good yeah but, yeah but it's great it's, it's great because when we're doing online marketing content and stuff we've got you know we've got we've got everything here we need so uh yeah you know lucky we've got it so yeah yeah so yeah welcome to the to the sony studio <laughs> yeah it certainly adds the experience and really gives us that uh that show feel that we've 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 all been missing as well so uh you know it's all, always nice to <laughs> when we have when we have a show in our shop you know we can see all the lovely stands and stuff so uh it's uh it's it's, yeah. it's nice to see there so um yes i mean this morning's going to be uh all about sony um uh, and it's uh I mean, it's an amazing journey that Sony have uh, have done, sort of photographically as well. I mean, it it it's it started a uh, well. I mean, it's 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 a system that's still going, but it started with the uh, with the A system, didn't it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I think it was back in two thousand and six, uh, back 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 that time. Um, we uh, in inherited Minolta and uh, started to create the A mount system. Which is still part of our range, and I've got I've got the A mount here. It's quite a big, bulky camera. I mean, very high performance. Uh, works very similar to a DSLR, but it has a translucent mirror, so still has a mirror, but the light passes through the lens, goes straight through to the sensor. So it's early adaptation of of what now we take for granted, which is obviously the mirrorless mirrorless cameras, um, light entering the lens and going straight to the sensor. So uh, yeah, you can use adapters with this now. And have done over the last few years that can then use on the the APS-C e mount and the full frame e mount as well. So even though it's an older part of the system, you know it's still you know we still have a lot of users out there using the kit, and you know it it, it combines very very well. 
Yeah, yeah, and uh, like you said, it's it's that sort of uh, it, it it's still part of of the of of the main system, and and with adapters, you can still chop and change between sort of the the A mount and the E mount system. Uh, so it's uh, still very much a, a part of uh, of of the, the Sony lineup, as it were. So um, yeah, and then from from A came came E uh, as 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 well. Yeah, so, um, back. back yeah back again i can't remember but uh you know we introduced the full frame cameras in i think uh, about six years ago so just before that we had the nex and then leading into the a um 6000 series now i've got here the 6100 um so you have to bear with me now because we've got a lot of models in the range so <laughs> we have we have the 6000 6100 these are all current um the 6400 uh and the 6600 and I'll, I'll go through them very briefly. But uh, these are uh, crop sensor APS-C. So if you're comparing this to full frame uh, or 35 mil equivalent, you the crop factor is 1.5. Um, micro four thirds obviously is double up, and uh, uh, you know Canon have their Canon uh, and Nikon have their own uh, uh, crop factor. So uh, it is an adaptation of the larger cameras. Um, I worked for Panasonic for eight years before I joined Sony three years ago. So, you know, smaller sensor cameras used to get bashed over the head for not being good in low light, um, uh, you know, uh, resolution and so on. You know, those days have gone. Um, the smaller sensor cameras, as we've seen, you know, with a recent ZV-1 being released this week, one inch sensors, APS-C sensors now are not just competitive, but they really give larger sensor cameras a run for their money. And that's across the board. Um, so, you know, the compromise on quality now uh, is, is really overlapping with the high end, which is great because you want the quality to run through the whole system. Um, but yeah, so you've got 6100, 6400 and 6600 is more dedicated to video. Um, yeah. And as, as we know, now, the, the overlap between stills and video is, is huge. Uh, more so today than ever with the recent, obviously, activity with the, with the global global COVID crisis, um, more people are turning to video than ever, including yep. myself. I've <laughs> done videos, editing, creation, um, because it's, re it's replacing, obviously, the physical side of what we do. Um, yeah. So, yes, so, so a lot of information there, but certainly within the APSC range, there's a huge crossover between stills and video. Yeah. And, um, I mean, the one thing about just the uh, the, the smaller uh, the, the smaller A systems, as it were, um, is that you uh, you've still got the small and, and compactness of it as well. Because I mean, ergonomically, they've they've just been designed to be potentially as small as they can be, but still ergonomic to to use uh, as as well. So um, you've got all the buttons in the right place, and uh, it's still a nice little grip on them as well. Yeah, I mean, um, don't get me wrong. There's there's a lot of comp uh, cameras in the market, you know, uh, uh, from all different brands that have but good grips, uh, very sharp, uh, high res viewfinders, battery life, dual card slots. You know, um, if you're looking to buy a camera now, you know, you've got so much choice. Um, and I think one of the key pieces of technology that Sony are very good at um, is, you know elements of photography that we really want in cameras, phones, etc., which is fast order focus, accurate, uh, you know, good color reproduction, low light capabilities. You know, these, these elements of why we buy a camera, what we're looking for when we're looking for a new camera or an upgrade or whatever, are still the same, whether it was 10 years ago, five years ago, last week. You know, we want that camera to respond quickly, we want it to be accurate, and the hit rate needs to be high. And I have to say, you know, having used Canon and, oh, sorry, DSLR, <laughs> um, you know, Panasonic Lumix, uh, and now Sony cameras, um, I have to say that, you know, the speed and 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 those elements of photography, you know, Sony do very, very well at. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to come over to Sony from other brands or you you, you you're looking for a new camera for the first time, then Sony is a considerable purchase because of uh, these, you know, elements of technology that are very good. Yeah. Now, I, I think as well as you know, when we when we talk about it, when we, when we say Sony, it's it's very hard not to say the next uh, bit of the sentence, which is Sony A7. <laughs> yeah. 
because mm -hmm. I mean it, it really has been truly a sort of uh, a, a sort of flagship sort of model for you um, and ultimately being being full frame uh, as, as, as well so yeah with the, with the a7 range it's it, you, you've sort of moved up into the in, into the full frame sort of genre as it were <laughs> yeah no you, you, you're right um, you go from APSC to full frame and you know full frame offers you a huge uh, advantage over um, our own APSC range in terms of um, lens diameter the amount of glass that you can use um saying that though we released uh, some new lenses last year and you know they are very high quality you know really good shallow depth of field uh very responsive you know, because we're using the same water focus technology now in the in the uh, APSC range um and like i said there's a, a very you know overlaps hugely now but yes you're right um we've tried to keep you know back when we introduced the a7 mark one you know, it was a. It, it took the market by surprise, and uh, uh, ever since, as um, you know, we're on our third generation now of, uh, and 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 more uh, on certain elements of our cameras. So, if you look at the range, we've got the all rounder, which is the A7. So you've got the A7 Mark One, Mark Two, and the very popular Mark Three. Uh, you then got the A7S. Now you've got the A7S One and Two, which is dedicated to low light. So S for sensitivity, huge following of video um, create uh, content creators might buying that product for 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 uh, it's low light but mainly for video then you have the a7r now the r is for resolution so you look at the a7r2 the three and most recently the four which i'm live streaming uh with the r4 at the moment um you know high res files so you're looking at 42 million pixels in the two and the three and then you're looking at 60 million pixels in the r4 which is Incredible. I mean, it's massive. It's not my cup of tea because I've got a very <laughs> limited hardware. But uh, you know, for landscape photographers, commercial um, studio, it's in, the detail and, and low light performance is is incredible. And a lot of people think the A9 is the flagship of um, of our range. Um, it's the f each latest model is the flagship in each pillar of of um, of genre of, of what the product does. It's the flagship in the A9, and now we've got the A9. Mark one and Mark two, and this is dedicated to speed. So this is, you know, the accuracy, the the buffer time. You know, it's the it's the world's first camera to have a a built-in uh, memory in the sensor, stacked layered, it's called. So yeah. you can shoot, you know, three hundred odd raw shots to the memory of the sensor before it's the card. So as long as you've got the latest cards transferring bit rates at three hundred, you know, plus per second, then you're going to get the best you know, autofocus system in our range and speed that our, our range offers. So, you know, very brief overview there, but if you sit in a category there and you're thinking, mm, maybe Sony I'll think about in the future, or you're thinking now, then kind of look at those ranges again, all rounder, sensitivity, resolution, and speed. Um, and, you know, that might give you a starting point to where you go next. No, that's uh, that, that's brilliant. Uh, we've had a couple of questions coming in. So uh, we've had one from Rob. Uh, uh, can I get an adapter from Minolta to Sony? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so uh, Minolta is essentially uh, is, is Sony's A mount, as it were. And uh, I, I think there's uh, LA E uh, adapters. Three and four, there, Mark. Yeah. Um, yes, I've got them here. So uh, again, you, you just have to do a bit of research with this because it's an older legacy system. Yes, you know, I pre-COVID, you know, when I get a chance to be out in the high street visiting stores and so on, I'll pop into a charity shop and look if there's any, you know, older lenses that somebody's got rid of. And sometimes you can pick some bargains up. Um, just be careful. I, I think, you know, just do your research really more beforehand and make sure that, that which one fits what. This has a, a face detection. Uh, box um, in the uh, LEA4, uh, as some of our uh, AMAT lenses have um, face detection, autofocus, and this is just a bog standard uh, straight to camera with with um, li limited uh, functionality. Uh, I think about two hundred quid, about a hundred pound. Um, yes, uh, so so you know you, you you're although we have I think with A mount, E mount, and full frame mount. 
there's roughly about 100, including accessories, native lenses. Um, but there are, you know, unlimited numbers of uh, older lenses that you can use with, with Sony adapters. But just do your research. When you do research, I advise if you've got an, an Apple or, or Android device, um, we, you can download a, an app called Sony Alpha Library. It's free. It's like an online catalog. It gets updated quite frequently. And in there, are um, you can filter uh, based on genre of photography, wide angle zoom, uh, both A mount and E mount. And that will help you. And you can do that online through our website as well. So if you're not sure what lens to buy or to start off with to, to look at, then, then visit those websites or download the free app as well. No, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you for your question, Rob, and hopefully that uh, that answered it for you. Um, also, if anyone else has got any questions, please pop them in the comments and we can certainly get to them. Uh, also, while we're touching on sort of uh, adapters and things as well, uh, once again, I, we've, we've seen it in the shop that... Uh, uh, that I mean, once again, especially with the with the A7, is that uh, it, it's a great camera if you've already got an existing uh, setup within, say, like a, a Canon setup or something. Uh, it is actually possible to uh, to move uh, to move your lenses across onto something like the A7 system, isn't it, Mark? You're absolutely right. There are a huge amount of adapters out there. Um, you know, some are really good. Some are and this is just based on feedback from customers, you know, uh, running yeah. the events in Sony would be 200 events a year plus. So we see thousands of customers. They mention all variety of brands. Uh, we don't endorse these brands. Uh, we use, you know, we're not paid to, 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 to comment on them. What we try and do at our events is bring these products to life and based on customer feedback uh, and then liaising with third party companies as well. Um, we uh, have here a Sigma MC11 adapter. Uh, this is a Canon fit, and this is a 35 mil, very bright, very sharp lens. MC11 adapter, I think you mentioned this with Sam yesterday from Sigma. Uh, we certainly did. One of the reasons why I, I personally like using this a lot is it, you can up, it updates so uh, frequently, but also the ease of use. Plug it into your computer, update it, um, and uh, rest assured that if you do have uh, other branded lenses uh, that will fit on, on this adapter, um, you know, it's keeping it up to date. Um, so from that point of view, it, it's it, and it just literally, you know, this is a 6100. Uh, it goes on the E mount and the full frame mount. Um, you'll see the sign behind me says one mount. So the mount on the APS-C cameras is the same as the full frame cameras. So you can cross over uh, the lenses, including the adapters. You know, there's nothing better than having a native system in a native brand, whatever the camera brand is. Uh, you're getting the best autofocus system. You're getting the best um, speed, accuracy, et cetera. Uh, but I have to say some of these adapters are very good. So, you know, if you're looking to move over, have a look at the native side. Uh, but also if you, you know, it's a big investment. I understand that. And people aren't going to go overnight and change and drop all, you know, whatever they've spent over time, because actually there's nothing wrong with that glass. The glass is very good. Um, but the fact is you can bring it over and then maybe look on a longer term to uh, then buy into the system. And I know retailers like yourselves, uh, you know, do a brilliant job at supporting customers when it comes to secondhand. Uh, you, yeah. you, know, you get some fantastic deals. So, uh, you know, if you are again looking to buy through uh, Cambrian in this instance, then talk to the guys because they could help you, um, you know, with, with what you've got. Um, and the autofocusing now, when this first came out, the adapter it was a bit hit and miss. Uh, in general, you tend to have nearly all the autofocus system of the camera uh, in in the lens uh, it, it, with the lens. Being a geek using Sony almost every day, we can see obviously a difference in in speed. Uh, but I have to say, like we do to a lot of customers, it is a good choice uh, between uh, having, you know, selling all your lenses and having one lens maybe and starting off, you can bring it over. Um, there's a, an old, fifth, let's say old, uh, the last bit of Canon kit I've got, it's a 50 mil, 1.4 is it? Yeah, 1.4. Um, I use that a lot for video, for manual. So you can pick yeah. up really cheap manual uh, adapters as well uh, to do that. But the fact is, you know, we're now talking about, huge amount of brands that are investing into the Sony system. 
uh, yep. Zeiss lenses. You can buy native Zeiss lenses for E-mount. Sigma now have their own E-mount system. Uh, there's Samyang, uh, Tamron. You know, I think I saw something this morning that there's more and more uh, cam uh, uh, lenses being uh, released uh, as we speak. So yeah. it's definitely a system where, you know, you've got a huge amount to choose from. Uh, and the fact is these adapters uh, have brought a lot of DSLR users over from other brands to, to, to Sony. Uh, they they certainly have they certainly have um and, and talking about sort of uh third party lenses and that where we've got another question that's slightly related uh, yeah we are on a uh, uh, uh the sony part of today so this might be a little bit biased um so I, i'm looking and buying the 200 to 600 sony uh lens oh there it is <laughs> uh out of the 150 to 600 lens for wildlife photography, image quality is most important factor. Please, can you give me your views? Um, I mean, well, um, let's let's sort of break this down sort of a little bit. I mean, one thing we can do is we can just do a, a little brief overview of the 200 to 600. Um, but equally, uh, the 150 to 600 is uh, is still an amazing lens. But can you tell me a little bit about the 200 to 600 there, Mark? Yeah, look, I've got a story around this as well. So when I joined Sony three years ago, um, uh, I approached Sigma to uh, help us with um, trying to bring the obviously the adapter story to life, and and uh, we exchange kit um, to, to to do that. So uh, I had a 150 to 600 mil Sigma lens, and we used it with a MC11 adapter on when the A9 was released, and we did some testing with it, and I have to say, it performed brilliantly. Um, like I said earlier, if you if uh, people uh, were um, online. You know, having a native system with a native glass is the best handshake you can get. There's nothing wrong with uh, that lens. Uh, the fact is, um, you know, this is made for that camera, whereas the 150 to 600 is a Canon fit, so it's made for that. So you will do see, see a difference in, you know, autofocus speed, autofocus, uh, how it locks on, um, and I can't guarantee that you will get all the features. Uh, again, that's why we don't endorse these things because obviously they're not made by ourselves. So, you know, very good solution. Uh, if you go for that, great. But the fact is you're not using a native system. Now, you know, virtually you can't tell how heavy this is. Um, but rest assured with me, I can handheld this very easily with inbuilt uh, stabilization. If you're using uh, our, one of our cameras with body stabilization, the two pieces of technology work together. I think Panasonic call it dual IS or something like that. Um, the algorithms in the lens and the body connect together to keep the sensor as straight as possible. Now, the higher end the, the lens, like G Master, the technology that goes into that is, is, is even better. So what you get with this is, although it's not a G Master, and for those of you, uh, I was going to talk about lenses later, but G Master is the red square. Um, G Standard is the black square. Uh, and then you obviously you've got Zeiss as well, Zeiss Sony. Um, this gets very close to G standard, G master standard quality, i.e. Um, very little chromatic aberration, fringing in the corners. Um, but what you do get is the same autofocus speed. So, you know, I don't know what body you're looking looking at, uh, what you've got. But let's say you've got an A7 III as a standard all-rounder. Um, this is lightning fast. If you've got an A9, it's even faster. Uh, you can, you've got a focus limiter on here as well. Um, I think it's 10 meters, yeah, 10 meters, so full and 10. You've got autofocus, you've got manual focus, you've got different elements of optical stabilization, including unpredictable movement. So, you know, what's this great for? Well, almost anything, but wildlife, landscape. If you're in the garden and look at birds, I've been, you know, the moon. Um, one of our ambassadors, Peter Neal, recently, uh, Terry Donnelly, I think as well, was doing some moon shots with this type of lens. We've got another guy down in Cornwall, Hugh Hastings, has been doing some work for the Duchy of Cornwall with this lens, and, it, you know, and we've got images being put into the press because of it so you know rest and i think the price point i'm not sure what you've got paul but it's you know it's pretty competitive i think uh, yes, we, something like that yeah yeah we, we will be competitive i mean you can uh uh it, it is available on our website so cambrianphoto.co.uk um oh. and uh yes we we should be at a 
a nice competitive price for you there. So yes, uh, uh, f- thank you for that, Mark. Uh, nice and enthusiastic about uh, that lovely lens, and it is it is lightweight as well, isn't it? That's one thing I can say is that I you know I've compared the two together, and it's uh, it's really lightweight. Uh, it is, and uh, uh, again, yeah. Sorry, go on, carry on. <laughs> it sounds like you can no. talk about that lens for for hours, yeah, I mean, uh, which, which, which is always uh, which is always a good thing. Which is always a good thing. Uh, another question coming in, uh, uh, a really good one actually. So we might need to just break this down a little bit as well. So, uh, what is the difference in tracking between the uh, <laughs> uh, between the A uh, the A seven uh, four? So that might be R4. the R. R is it? Yeah, the R4, because uh, there isn't an A74, uh, and the A9 or the A9 Mark II. So, Good question. Uh, okay. yeah, so we've got the, I, I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about the R there, um, and yeah. I don't think there's any difference between, in, as far as focusing is concerned, between the A9 and the A9 Mark II. So um, is there any differences between sort of the a7 r mark 4 and the a9 as far as focusing is concerned yeah yeah there are there are um you've got uh so my pc's just decided to there we go back um yes so the a9 has 693 autofocus points across the pretty much 93 percent of the sensor so near enough the whole sensor um the a7 r4 is less than that so off the top of my head, I can't remember what the autofocus points are, but I think it's something around 400 odd. Um, so, you know, you've got less coverage, basically. So that's the first difference. Um, that's not a massive negative. Um, but the fact is the A9 has the stack layered sensor. So the buffer time enables you to shoot at 20 frames per second on the A9 Mark II mechanically and in electronic shutter as well. The maximum that the A7R4 can do is 10 frames per second. Uh, but remember, you're shooting at 60 million pixels. So the buffer time obviously is going to drop off. I think, again, off the top of my head, you know, don't quote me on this, is roughly around 70 odd pictures. So, you know, the speed and the buffer time in the A9 is far superior. So it'll allow you to continue to shoot. Uh, and, and that you might and find the a7r4 if you were doing a test between the two is is obviously less responsive um one of the advantages of having a large sensor though uh pixel uh, density on the a7r4 is you can crop it in camera so you can go from full frame at yeah. 60 to aps-c at 28. now the a9 can do that but it'll drop down to 10. so all of a sudden hang on it you've now got 28 million pixels with a hundred percent autofocus coverage right yeah in a 60 million pixel camera so like i said each camera in the their pillar of where they sit have their own advantages um and if you then cropped in camera with say a 200 to 600 you're going to turn that 200 to 600 at 28 million pixels with 100 you know percent coverage to a 300 to 900 mil lens that's pretty impressive Mark, that's 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 exciting and impressive. Hey, I'm going to go out and do some shooting. Hang on, I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to grab my kit and go out now. Yeah, uh, no, that's really important uh, that, that, though. It, it, because we are seeing a, a you know the A7R4 is direct, you know clearly a a commercial you know a studio a landscape camera you know high res fast but through events again we're seeing more and more wildlife photographers of all levels enthusiasts like me you know amateurs pros using that system for that um so you know keep that in mind if you didn't think of you know that was a benefit before but all three cameras are fantastic and i think you know when we bring a new camera out the older version gets price reposition i think the a9 at the moment is very very competitive in price when you compare it to what else is in the market no that's brilliant i think we'll uh, we'll end today on a cheeky question uh here uh, which is oh hi Mark. Uh, <laughs> uh, I knew we were going to get one of these. How would you know? <laughs> yeah, you knew it was. You knew it was coming. Uh, any sign on the A7 uh, Mark IV winky face? Uh, <laughs> so there's a bit of cheek in there. I currently use a pair of uh, of A7 uh, A7 Mark III's uh, for wedding and photo and video work. Wondering if whether to splash out on an A7 R4. 
uh, but really don't need the resolution. Uh, can you give us any ideas there, Mark? <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, the first question, unfortunately, I can't answer because I have no idea. <laughs> you know, cannot answer, unfortunately. Uh, please talk to our PR department uh, for future uh, information. Um, but the other questions I can. So, um, you know, yeah, it's a tricky one. If you want the additional resolution, if your workflow includes printing, and the ability to print larger, um, then yes, you know, see a massive different uh, difference in dynamic range, um, detail, uh, uh, and and the performance of the A7R Mark IV uh, is it depends. The video side is slightly better. The focus into the A7 Mark III, I have to say personally, is better. It's got a you know wider wider coverage. Um, it responds very similar, but uh, you have 693A, almost the the A9 technology in the in the A7 III. Uh, so what you do get with the R4 though is the new grip. Um, you get uh, both card slots will take the fast cards. Uh, you've got the ergonomics of the camera has changed. So like the A9 Mark II, the buttons are more prominent. It actually feels better in the hand. The viewfinder obviously is a lot sharper and the resolution is one of the highest with other brands out in the marketplace as well. So, you know, the I mean, I can't put the A7R4 down for all the video stuff I've done recently. I've done it all on that uh, with a combination of lenses. So, um, it, you know, you've got two cameras that do a brilliant job. But if you're looking for that additional detail with all the new handling of a camera, then, yes, you could you could trade up, um, you know. That's the why the market is where it is at the moment. There's so much variety and choice you can choose from. And like anything else, you can hold on for new products and new products and hold on and hold on and hold on. Um, the fact is, if, if something new comes, obviously, you're going to pay a premium for it. Uh, and, and you know, you might be, you know, consideration is an A7R3 as well, uh, which uh, price point at the moment is very good. So, yeah. um, you, know, you know, that could be a, a choice that maybe you hadn't looked at before. But uh, good question. I like challenging questions. <laughs> and nicely maneuvered there as well mark we 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 do like those questions here uh fun, fantastic uh mark it's been uh wonderful having you um uh, just before uh you leave us um uh, you you have sort of uh donated some more of your time um and you will be sort of giving uh some one to ones uh sort of uh later on today um now um that, that is available on our website. I'm not too sure whether the spaces are all full yet or not, but uh, we do have a waiting list and hopefully we'll be able to do this uh, again sort of soon uh, if, if, if uh, you didn't get in today, basically. But uh, uh, yes, we're going to be sort of offering some short sort of one-to-one -one sessions uh, uh, with, with Mark uh, that you can come in and uh, ask him sort of anything, really. Uh, so uh thank you for doing that as well mark it's always uh yes i know the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um uh and it's it's lovely to, it's so so nice to see you enthusiastic about the uh about the system as well so it's uh re really gets us uh really gets us going <laughs> as far as the kits concerned good, good start so, to the day. Um, i'm off to yes. get some birds yeah that's it that's it um yeah. everyone watching please give a nice big thank you to mark for joining us today uh it's been it's been wonderful having him um uh, mark i'll just put you back into the green room for a second it's been been lovely having you uh thank you very much thank you thanks guys see you again soon cheers that's brilliant uh yes uh absolutely lovely to see uh Mark and his uh his, his picked up Sony area and bringing it home with him. Dedication to uh, dedication to the brand there. Absolutely lovely to see. Uh, I think we did miss a couple of questions in the comments. Apologies for that. Uh, we will try and get back to them uh, as as quick as we can for you. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, we do appreciate you commenting uh, and asking questions on our on our live feeds. Uh, it uh, is important to us uh, that we get that communication there. Uh, it's the advantage of being live. Uh, also, if you're re-watching this video, uh, you can still comment on the video um, and ask your questions. We can get back to them as, as quick as we possibly can. Um, also, uh, if you're re-watching the video, if you can make sure you like the video. If you're on a Facebook page, like the page. 
Uh, if you're on our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to our channel as well uh, so we can help spread the word about our beautiful show. Uh, until later on today, uh, that's goodbye for me for now. Cheerio.